What is the most bullshit reason for a teacher to give you a bad grade? I broke my right arm in third grade. I write with my right hand. The teacher gave me a bad grade because my handwriting with my left hand was barely legible. I've got dysgraphia, which is basically a medical reason for absolutely shitty handwriting. I got a special allowance to use a device. I forget what it was called. That was basically a digital typewriter. It amounted to a keyboard with a simple B, W, L, C, D screen. You could hook it to a computer or printer to easily print stuff off it. It didn't have internet or even a calculator. It only functioned to type. One teacher wouldn't let me use it. Despite her legally not being able to do that, little sixth grade me didn't know she was literally breaking the law and went with it. We had a test and I got marked down for poor penmanship. My mom asked me why I didn't use my typing device. And I told her the teacher wouldn't allow it. She, raised, hell, she fucking destroyed that teacher. And for the rest of the year, despite my teacher's objections, I was allowed to use my device anytime I wanted. Edit, dysgraphia to dysgraphia, spell check thinks both are wrong. But the second one is correct. This would be in a paper from some other students but you can do better. I got IC, and no other feedback on how to improve. Edit. Thanks for the gold and for all the comments. It seems I'm not alone in this one. Your mistake was being too awesome on your previous papers. Not a bad grade, but I remember I was so close to being the first person to ever score a 100% on my 10th grade. Spanish final. The one question I got wrong was. Que tipo de comida es el pescado? What type of food is fish? A. El carne. Meat. B. La fruta. Fruit. C. El pan. Bread. D. La verdura. Vegetable. I of course picked meat. And got it wrong because my teacher insisted that fish isn't meat. She's a Catholic and eats fish on Fridays during Lent. According to her the correct answer is fruit. Because fish are sometimes known as the fruit of the sea. What the actual fuck? Cram your 99%. Senora, I've had bad Spanish teachers but what? In the 90s my family didn't have a computer and I had no access to one. I spent a lot of time on a handwritten assignment for school and the teacher gave me a B. Writing as a comment, I would have given you an A if you had typed it up on a computer. I'm still bitter. I knew a girl in the early 2000s who, who used a typewriter because she didn't have a printer or a floppy disk reader in her computer. In high school, I used the word lascivious to describe a character in a book and my teacher didn't know what the word meant, so logically, he took off a point. You just reminded me of a teacher that thought of ins was just a misspelling and took off points. Still salty about that. Oh my god, you just reminded me of the time my high school teacher didn't believe unison was a word. That's ridiculous. She should know a unison is one buffalo standing by itself. If there are two buffaloes then it's bison. Because you didn't read my paper. It was a university class where a pa was responsible for grading the papers. He was clearly overwhelmed and just reading introductions and grading based on them alone. I had a two-part introduction that fully addressed the prompt, but as he only read the first part one got my paper back with a big C at the top. I ended up getting full credit after I challenged the initial grade. Glad you had a better result. My first large college paper for a pre-Civil War history class. Freshman year came back with a giant red D written on it with practically no feedback. I was in a writing program and I had always excelled at essays. So I was sort of shocked. Went to the professor and asked him about the grade and lack of instruction. He sighed, looked down and said, Westhoff, I don't like you. He went on and on after that with some bullshit reasons. But apparently the big issue came from the first week of class. He was talking about manifest destiny and said something like, Now you have to remember. Back in those days there were 50 to 100 miles between towns out in the western USA. 
and I raised my hand and said that there was still 50 to 100 miles between towns in the western US. He said I was exaggerating and I told him I wasn't because that's where I grew up. That paper was 40% of our grade. He refused to change the grade or even reread it. I scraped AC plus in that class and I was so fucking proud of that grade even though it was the worst grade one received in my life. At the end of the semester, I decided to ask him for his grading documentation to see if I could challenge the paper with a school, but he claimed he had already thrown it away. I found out later that was bullshit too, but I didn't press any further. She gave me a zero because she didn't think I read the book. She said I would have gotten a 75% if she thought I read it. 75% of the test questions right supposedly means I didn't actually do the reading, still one of those things that pisses me off even 10 years later. Why wouldn't you give her a verbal synopsis of the book when she said you didn't read it? Because they didn't read it? Clearly edit, comma. But how do you know I didn't read it? Quote. Are you talking back to me? Young man. Quote. I'm legit asking you. Don't take that tone with me. Quote, me, defends myself with facts and logic adult, I'm sorry, I don't speak disrespect. My teacher lost my coursework on the bus home. I refused to redo a year's worth of work in three weeks and I got taken from an A to AC. Bullshit. School sided with hi monsieur. What kind of school allows a teacher to, I assume, admit they lost coursework and have the school go, oh well. Students fault minus points. That makes no sense to me. This happened at my secondary school as well. The teacher won't admit to losing the work and then it becomes you versus them on if you actually submitted it. Or they lost it. I've never seen a student win this argument. Got points off because of the bad grammar in the quote I used. The quote was Oppenheimer's I am become death. Destroyer of worlds. I had a bitchy religion professor back in junior high school. She lowered the grade of another student because they had written in the exam that when Moses got the Ten Commandments there was lightning when the correct answer was thunderbolts. Fourth grade, the day before Thanksgiving break. There was no work to be done of course. So we had a busy work art assignment. We were all handed graph paper and told to color each of the squares either yellow orange, red, or brown. And once we finished, we were supposed to cut out corn shapes to make Indian corn decorations. I already thought this was stupid, and filling in all the squares was tedious. So I traced the corn shape on the graph paper and only filled in the squares that would end up as part of the final product. This meant my decorations looked the same as all the others but I didn't waste time filling it squares that would just get cut away. When the teacher saw what I had done, she gave me a 50 for skipping work. We had a similar busy work assignment in a German course I was in when a substitute teacher was there who couldn't speak German. We got to watch a German game show that was basically all trivia, and a sheet that just asked the same questions as the game show which obviously showed the correct answer afterwards. So a lot of us smart people thought, fuck it, I'll watch a 2x speed, or jump around the video to the points where it's asked and answered, and ignore all the filler. Sub was very unhappy that we were doing the work efficiently just because the point of it was to get exposure to the language. I get that lady, but we're still doing the assignment. And the instructions were for us to work on other running assignments for that course afterwards. Anyways, either way I'm thinking German the same amount of time. She was upset because she didn't want high schoolers with time to kill. My friend failed French because she had a French accent. And the teacher couldn't understand her French because she was American. My friend had spoke French since she was four. Took Spanish class in high school. Half the class was either born in Mexico or first-generation American with Mexican parents. But apparently Mexican Spanish isnt real Spanish and would make them down for having accents. A friend of mine got a minus one for scratching his head. 
Our teacher said he was faking it. I guess that teacher had too many bad experiences with women who faked head scratches. A spelling test, not graded by the teacher, but by the kid next to us. Kid named Anthony decided all my words that had letters U and E were switched and marked pretty. Much every word wrong. They, they weren't. Like, this was probably in third grade so my handwriting was chicken scratch. But that was really stupid. To me, I was upset, since it was the first time I failed something in school. Go to your window right now and scream at the peak of your ability, hash asterisk asterisk fuck you a-n-t-h-o-n-y-y-y-y asterisk 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 feck yo Anthony. I was taking a one week online class. In the syllabus, the teacher said you must post six times throughout the week. So, I posted 6x on Monday, 1x on Wednesday and felt I was good to go. I get my grade, teacher comments and the teacher wrote asterisk Kayano905. You had some good posts early in the week, dot, but then you stopped posting. So in had to mark you down asterisk. I was annoyed by this, but then realized it was the last online course in the program and frankly I didn't care. I still graduated and that certificate is proudly sitting in my junk drawer for all to see. Taking online courses now in the rule in almost every single class seems to be one post and comment on two of your classmates posts. Every week it's the same posts. Less than topic greater than is really interesting and important. I really learned a lot, especially about less than quote from lecture slide greater than then a few responses saying, I really agree. Less than topic greater than really is important in today's industry. Quote, please. It's so frustrating because they are trying to force discussion. Which is the first mistake because it's not organic. And the questions really aren't the best for discussions. It's like discussion topic. Is 1 plus 1 equals 2? Quote, Shit, now I've got to figure out how to stretch the answer yes into a whole paragraph of why 1 plus 1 equals 2. Then I've got to get two paragraph replies to classmates which can't just say I agree. Unless the discussion is opinion based. Then it seems like a mistake to make it a discussion. There's one correct answer. You're not allowed to write that you agree. So 99% of people's answers are usually generic statements are just like the same random fact that everyone else is adding in. Staples were not in the right spot for my essay even though I had them in the top left corner. Like always, that's when you know the teacher doesn't like you and is literally looking for petty reasons to take points off. We had weekly spelling tests in my 11th grade English class which I thought was a bit remedial by that point and probably said so in a not completely diplomatic way. The teacher even made you write any words you got wrong five times and hand that in to her by ten of the class. I would typically get perfect scores on them, but one time I got a test back with no actual errors marked as of zero percent. My teacher's explanation was she saw me talking to someone in our free period before class who ended up doing poorly and that was my fault because I distracted them from possibly studying. What? How does this make literally any sense? For the final submission of my graphic design college qualification, the brief was to design branding for a pub club. I got IB because my concept was too cool. The sheer mind-fucking bullshit of that actually knocked me so hard that I didn't even bother pursuing it as a career beyond the course. I work as a designer. Did they really mean it didn't fit the brand? Let's say the prompt was design an identity around this old local pub that's been here for 100 years. They want to update the logo and menu while still keeping with some of the traditions and iconography found in the old identity. Now, if that's the prompt, too cool is a nice way of saying it's not hitting the correct demographic or accomplishing the goals laid out in the prompt. You've made a hipster logo for a mom and pop shop. The brief was pretty basic and open-ended. It was basically along the lines of, a brand new night spot has opened in the city. It's a pub during the day. 
and converts to a club after hours. Design and develop a brand to promote this new place in the city. She apparently pictured a sort of dive bar in her head when writing the brief. But it was never made clear. And she never once mentioned it when looking at the interim development stuff as I worked on it. Over the month we had to finish it. I could have changed tack at any point. But she never course corrected me. Thank you so much for watching and have a good day.